The F-15 Eagle has represented the pinnacle of American air superiority since its introduction in the late 1970s after the Vietnam War, and with good reason. Equipped with multifunction displays, a highly detailed heads-up display, an innovative airframe, and robust engines that can propel it to speeds of up to 1,600 miles per hour, there are only a few aircraft in the world that can engage it and survive to tell the story. The F-15 Eagle gave way to several MiG variants throughout its career and has shown no signs of aging due to its excellent combat capabilities and handling. The Hardy Fighter has proven capable of continuing fighting despite enduring extensive damage as it did in the 1980s when an Israeli F-15 managed to fly over 10 miles and land after losing its entire right wing during training maneuvers. No wonder it's regarded as the fighter jet par excellence with an impressive kill-to-loss record that, to this day, is like nothing else out there. McNamara's Multirole Aircraft As the United States prepared for imminent war against the North Vietnamese before the Gulf of Tonkin incident, Defense Secretary Robert McNamara urged the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force to commit themselves to use standard aircraft for future military operations. This led both branches to develop the Joint TFX, or F-111, program, although they had different priorities for their desired aircraft. As such, the program was intended to develop an aircraft that could serve both as a long-range interceptor for the Navy and a medium-range interdiction aircraft for the Air Force. McNamara also suggested the Air Force develop a new, low-cost tactical fighter that could replace the Super Sabre for the Close Air Support, or CAS, role. Incidentally, the shootdowns of multiple American aircraft at the hands of North Vietnamese MiG-17s in early 1965 convinced the USAF that the branch required an air superiority fighter before an attack aircraft. In April of 1965, Harold Brown, director of the Department of Defense Research and Engineering, suggested the Air Force purchase Northrop's F-5, which was an interdiction fighter first and an attack aircraft second. Brown also suggested delving into the FX program, which aimed to produce an airframe that prioritized maneuverability over speed. Several companies answered the request for proposal, but none of the designs fulfilled the Air Force's requirements for an outstanding air superiority fighter. Consequently, the branch had to look elsewhere as the war in Vietnam escalated. The lives of thousands of Americans fighting in Southeast Asia depended on it. The FX Competition While the Navy and the Air Force disputed McNamara's desire to develop a multi-role aircraft, the Soviet Union introduced the new MiG-25 high-speed and high-altitude interceptor in 1967. The appearance of the MiG-25 led to a crisis in the Department of Defense. The Air Force was outclassed and quickly modified the requirements for a revamped FX program. It was imperative that the new aircraft surpass the Soviet fighter. When the Navy accepted Grumman's future F-14 Tomcat design, the Air Force was freed to finally issue the conditions for an authentic air superiority fighter, and a request for proposal was issued in September of 1968. The requirements included a single-seat fighter, a takeoff weight of 40,000 pounds, a maximum speed of Mach 2.5, and a thrust-to-weight ratio of nearly 1 to 1 at mission weight. McDonnell Douglas, General Dynamics, Fairchild Republic, and North American Rockwell all submitted proposals, with McDonnell Douglas prevailing in December of 1969 and given the F-15 Advanced Tactical Fighter contract. The company used lessons learned during the Vietnam War and concluded that the USAF required maneuverable fighter aircraft that could engage enemy fighters while also evading surface-to-air missiles, or SAMs. Design-wise, the F-15 resembled the twin-tailed Tomcat, but with fixed wings. These designs were based on successful NASA wind tunnel tests that provided excellent aerodynamics. The aircraft was eventually dubbed the F-15 Eagle, and the first single-seat variant was christened by James S. McDonnell, founder of McDonnell Aircraft, on June 26, 1972. Test pilot Irv Burroughs took the first F-15 Eagle to the air a month later at Edwards Air Force Base in California, and the U.S. Air Force approved the Eagle for full-rate production less than six months later. F-15 Design The F-15 was a twin-engine, high-performance, all-weather air superiority fighter that quickly stood out due to its incredible maneuverability and acceleration. The single-seat variant was dubbed F-15A, 
and the twin-seat variant F-15B. Both were powered by Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines that allowed the aircraft to reach speeds that exceeded Mach 2.5 or 1,600 miles per hour. The astonishing speed made the F-15 the first fighter with enough thrust to accelerate vertically. In addition, the Eagle had an all-metal fuselage with a shoulder-mounted wing that had a crop delta shape, while the ailerons and lift flaps were located on the trailing edge. The empennage was made of composite construction, which resulted in a thin tailplane and rudders and the cockpit was placed in the forward fuselage with one windscreen and a canopy with 360 degrees of visibility. Finally, its main armament comprised an internally mounted 20mm Gatling gun and an array of different missiles, including AIM-7 Sparrows, AIM-9 Sidewinders, the Small Diameter Bomb-1, and the Joint Direct Attack Munition, or JDAM. State-of-the-art systems. Throughout the decades, the Air Force introduced several models of the F-15 to use in all sorts of combat operations, enhancing some of the core features that remain unique. According to the U.S. Air Force's fact sheet, quote, The F-15's superior maneuverability and acceleration are achieved through high engine thrust-to-weight ratio and low wing loading. The low wing is a vital factor in maneuverability, and combined with the high thrust-to-weight ratio, enables the aircraft to turn tightly without losing airspeed. All the weapons and flight control systems allow the F-15 pilots to confidently engage and excel in air-to-air -air combat. However, a standout feature is its multi-mission avionics system. The setup comprises a state-of-the-art heads-up display, or HUD, ultra-high frequency communications, advanced radar, flight instruments, a tactical navigation system, and an instrument landing system. The heads-up display provides the pilot with all the essential information required to track and destroy hostile aircraft without the need to turn to the cockpit's instrument panel. Meanwhile, an internally mounted tactical electronic warfare system with a friend or foe setup ensures the F-15 can conduct operations behind enemy lines or over enemy controlled airspace. The system also provides automatic countermeasures against threats to ensure the safety of the aircraft. Notably, the F-15's pulse Doppler radar system can detect and track aircraft at close and long ranges and at treetop levels without leading to ground clutter. The radar automatically acquires targets during dogfights and sends the target information to the pilot's HUD and central computer for effective weapons delivery. Moreover, the Eagle's automated weapon system allows the pilot to easily swap between weapon systems, providing immediate visual guidance on the HUD for target acquisition. Combat Operations In 1975, an F-15A dubbed Streak Eagle climbed several world records, reaching an altitude of 98,425 feet in just 3 minutes 27.8 seconds from brake release at takeoff and coasting to nearly 103,000 feet before descending. The first Eagles that saw action were part of the Israel Air Force during the early 1980s. During the constant conflict in the Middle East, F-15s from the IAF downed more than 50 Syrian fighters with no losses of their own. On May 1, 1983, the 106th and 116th squadrons of the Israeli Air Force flew to the Negev Desert for a training exercise with two F-15 Eagles and four older A-4N Skyhawks. During the scrambling and interception maneuvers, one of the Skyhawk pilots approached pilot Zivi Nadivi's wingman to finish him off, completely unaware that Nadivi was already positioned above and behind him. Moments later, the Skyhawk locked onto the F-15 and began to climb, colliding with him. The Skyhawk came apart moments after contact, but its pilot survived. Meanwhile, Nadivi's F-15 lost its right wing and went into a brutal downward spin. He was told to eject as soon as he could stabilize the aircraft, but was completely unaware of the extensive damage it had suffered. Knowing that an airstrip was some 10 miles out, Nadivi hit the F-15's afterburners and leveled the aircraft. Fuel was pouring from the wing area, and the clock was ticking. As the F-15 made its way to the landing position at over 300 miles per hour, Nadivi lowered the tail hook to slow the landing, but it was ripped apart. The aircraft then stopped short before reaching the barricades at the end of the airstrip, and it was only until Nadivi turned around to shake hands with his crewmen that both men realized the aircraft's situation. It was a true testament to the incredible strength and design of the F-15 Eagle. A New Century Prior to the beginning of the first Gulf War, the USAF introduced the F-15C, F-15D, 
and F-15E Strike Eagle variants. This latest model was built from an Air Force requirement to conduct air-to-ground missions, and it had space for two crewmen. The Strike Eagle could carry 23,000 pounds of air-to-ground ordnance and featured an advanced targeting and navigation system that allowed it to fly at low altitudes with high speed without hampering its accuracy in combat scenarios. During the war against Iraq, the F-15C, D, and E models were credited with 32 out of 36 air-to-air victories, and most of the destroyed Iraqi aircraft were MiG-29s, MiG-23s, and Sukhoi Su Soviet fighters. In the conflict's aftermath, the Eagles were deployed to establish Iraqi no-fly zones and helped conduct humanitarian operations in the region. Several F-15s flew above the skies of Bosnia in 1994 as part of the joint operations with NATO, and during the 1999 military intervention at Kosovo, U.S. Air Force F-15s took down four Serbian MiG-29 fighters as part of Operation Allied Force. The F-15 fleet also took an active combat role as part of the operations Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom at the dawn of the 21st century. They hit hostile Afghan targets and conducted dozens of air-to-ground missions as the U.S. armed forces cleared the land of Taliban forces. The future. More than 1,500 F-15s have been built to this day in the United States, Israel, Germany, Japan, Saudi Arabia, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom plan to continue employing the legendary aircraft until at least 2040. In 2018, Boeing announced that the future F-15EX design would replace the existing F-15C models. This weapon will enhance the F-15's acceleration, durability, maneuverability, computing power, and weapons carriage to improve interoperability. The EX will also feature a new electronic warfare suite, radar, and sensors, and is expected to achieve Mach 2.5 speeds with a range of over 12,000 nautical miles to strike deep targets anywhere in the world. To this day, the F-15 has over 105 registered aerial victories and no defeats, and not one of its models has ever been lost during combat operations. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting content about modern warfare and the technology behind it. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.